Reolink contacted me recently and asked me if I would be interested in reviewing this battery operated pan and tilt camera. It's the Argus PT 2K, in other words it produces 2K video, has got a 4 megapixel CMOS sensor, two way audio communication and it's also got person and vehicle detection. Now I've already reviewed the HD Argos PT and I was really impressed with that so I'm expecting good things from this and the one thing that was missing off that camera was the person and vehicle detection so I think this is going to prove to be a very good security camera as well as a camera they also provided me with a solar panel so I'll add that to the review as well you can buy this camera from Amazon at the moment you can either buy the camera on its own or the camera and a solar panel obviously a solar panel extends the amount of time you can go between recharges and possibly means that you don't have to recharge the camera at all so to start off the review I'm going to show you some footage that has been recorded on the camera and downloaded from the camera so you can see what the video is like and just get an idea of the quality of the camera So on the Rio Link app you can ask it to send a notification when the camera detects movement. As well as that you can ask it to send you an email with either a photograph or some video of what it's detected and it will say person or vehicle detected. Now you've just seen a clip of the video, this is the email that was sent to me because I've selected email. The size of the file on that email was one megabyte which seems ridiculous to me for video of that quality but it, you can see instantly what's going on when it sends you the emails. I've got an Argus 3 Pro and it does exactly the same thing and it's absolutely fabulous. So you know when you get a notification that within a few seconds an email will arrive and it's very easy to see whether you've got a problem just by checking the email. So I'll show you a few more clips that have been recorded on the camera. Hello there. Right, so now I'm going to test the voice capabilities. My wife is in the house. Hopefully she's got a notification to say that there's somebody in front of the camera. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? I can hear you, can you hear me? I can. Actually, you're pretty clear if I'm stood right in front of the camera. Would you be able to hold a conversation with somebody? Yes, it's a bit of a delay, but yes. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Thank you for doing that for me. Bye. So as you can see, it actually works quite well, the two-way communication. So I'll give you a quick look at the box. Remember that you can pause the video if you want to actually read any of the details. Inside the box we've got the camera, an aerial security sticker, a bracket for mounting the camera and a template to show you where to drill when you're mounting the bracket, a strap to allow you to attach the camera to a post or a tree, micro USB charging cable, some associated paperwork and a set of operating instructions and then fixtures and fittings and in that bag, I don't know whether you can see it, there's a reset pin as well. So inside the solar panel box there is a solar panel, a mounting bracket, a template there for mounting the bracket, some fixtures and fittings, a set of operating instructions and some more associated paperwork. And I just want to point out that the solar panel comes with quite a long cable which is quite handy. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach the aerial to the camera, it's quite simple. The aerial just screws in and then once it's tight you can actually spin the aerial round 
without damaging it so that you can place it in the position that you want it in. So that's the aerial fitted, that's very quick. Looking at the front of the camera, on the top there there is a microphone. And on the bottom there you can see a speaker which allows for two-way communication. There is a PIR detector behind this screen here on the front of the camera above the lens. This is a status indicator light. This is a daylight sensor. And then underneath, around the actual lens, there are six IR LEDs for night vision. If I tilt the lens right back, so you can see there's a waterproof cover there that's for a micro SD card. If I pull that back... The micro SD card goes in this way, so it just slots in there, you need to push it in and click it in with your fingernail, it's quite difficult to do. There we go, it's fitted, and it's also worth mentioning that there at the side there is a hole, and that is where you use a reset pin to reset the camera if you've got any issues with it. On the back of the camera there is another waterproof cover with the on off switch for the camera. And this one at the very bottom is for the micro USB cable, so you can charge it via that, and that is where you fit the solar panel as well. Underneath the camera there is a socket there for a tripod mount or to mount it on the bracket that comes in the box. And you'll also notice there is a QR code, and we use that QR code for setting up the camera. And the first thing I'm going to do is charge the battery. Now we've got an orange LED that tells us that the camera is charging. So as you can see, it's now fully charged, the LED's gone green, and it took 2 hours and 10 minutes to charge the battery. Now I'm going to connect the camera to the Rio Link iPhone app. As you can see, I've already downloaded the app, but if you haven't got that on your iPhone or an Android device, there is a QR code in the instructions. So you can scan the QR code, and it will take you to the Rio Link app. If you just search for the Rio Link app on an Android device or on an iPhone, you'll find it very easily. I'm going to turn the camera on using the on-off switch at the back of the camera. That's it turned on now, you can see we've got LEDs on there. And it's making that dinging noise. So what I'm going to do now is open up the Reolink app. So as you can see I've got several uh, devices fitted on here already. But I'm going to click the plus button. And it's asking me to scan the QR code which is on the bottom of the camera. There we go. So it found that almost instantly. And as you can see I've got two choices there. Wi-Fi already configured or Wi-Fi not configured. Well, the Wi-Fi is not configured on this camera, so I'll click on that. Please make sure the camera is powered on. Click on Next. It's asking me if I've heard the ding sounds coming from the camera. Well, we can hear that now, so I'll click on there and click on Next. So now the system is asking me to enter the password for my Wi-Fi. To connect your camera to Wi-Fi network, face your phone and let the camera scan the QR code. There we go. Camera is connecting to your router. Please wait. So there's a prompt on there saying I've heard the sound, the beep sound from the camera. I'll click on that, click on next, and it's asking me if I've heard connection to the router succeeded, and I have, so I'll click on that and click on next. And now it's connecting my device. So it's asking me to enter a password for the camera, which I'm going to do now. So I've entered the password, and it's saying I need to name my device. So I'm just going to call mine Argus PT2K. I've got to select whether it's going indoors or outdoors. It's going outdoors, so I'll click on that and next. Now it's asking me to format the SD card. It's giving me some instructions on how to mount the camera and that's saying the initialization is finished. So I'll click on finish and there is my Argus PT2K and as you can see working correctly on the app. So once you've done that you can just go into the app and set the camera up how you want it whether you want notifications that type of thing and if you're not sure what to do, go on the Real Link website because they've got really good instructions on how to sort all this stuff out. So the pan and tilt capabilities of this camera are 355 degrees horizontally, so it can move around 355 degrees, just leaving a small 5 degree gap where it stops, and vertically 140 degrees. Now, pan and tilt is not so important i think on a battery camera because you're not sat watching the camera all the time but what it does do is it gives you the possibility of moving the camera to different positions at different times if you have got a reason to be looking at different places at different times this camera means that you can actually do it remotely using the app or the client software one thing i will say though is there's quite a delay between you actually activating the pan and tilt on the app or the client software and the camera moving Saying that though, it is a very handy feature. There are three different ways to mount the camera. Obviously, using the bracket, you can drill the bracket into the wall, mount the camera underneath, 
and if you actually want to mount it underneath the roof as in on an eave or something like that there's a little button on the top of this bracket if you slide the button back you can twist an insert inside which pops out this will allow you to screw it directly onto a surface so that the camera is hanging down from that so under the eaves something like that that's a very handy feature and it also allows you to remove the camera from the bracket when it's mounted normally it just kind of clicks in place like that's very simple the third alternative involves using this bracket and a strap it pulls through the strap so that you can strap the camera onto a tree or a pipe or a post so I think it's very handy that you've got three separate ways of mounting it and obviously if you can get hold of a longer strap you could put that round a pretty hefty tree so as you can see I've mounted the camera on a post here it's a wooden post and I know that I could have screwed it on but it's only here temporarily it's not going to be mounted here permanently just so that I can test the camera for the review and one thing I will mention with the strap is that there is some movement on that bracket that I don't think would be there if it was screwed in but obviously if it's a temporary mount there's no point screwing it into this wooden post it does actually provide a good alternative if you've got a post or a tree to actually mount the camera without having to screw the bracket on which I think is a very good idea so as you can see we've got a cable connected to the camera and there's a green light on there saying it's charging and that cable is actually from the solar panel it's a very cold winter's day but we are getting an occasional bit of sunshine and it's still accepting the charge from that solar panel I'll show you where I've mounted it so you can see there's a solar panel and then look back there you can just see the camera there's a camera the solar panel will extend the life of the battery possibly definitely depending on how much sunshine you get so it's definitely worth investing in one it comes with a four meter cable so there's plenty of room for maneuver for mounting it so on the app and also on the client software that little sun icon there next to the Argus 2PT is an indication that it's charging via the solar panel so you can tell whether it's receiving a charge from the solar panel or not if it's got that sun icon on the app or on the client software I'm really glad that Reolink asked me to review this camera I think it is a very good security camera good video two-way communication works well and the vehicle and person detection is absolutely brilliant it is very accurate lets you know whether there's a person or a vehicle on your property the fact that it sends you an email with a video clip is brilliant and I have used it over and over again on one of my other cameras because it basically lets you know instantly what's going on you can see what the camera is seeing without actually being anywhere near the camera and decide whether you need to take action or not add the solar panel and you've got a very long battery life I can say that from experience with one of the other cameras that I've got it does last a very long time I've had that camera a good few months and I've only charged it once last month so you get a long long run out of the batteries possibly indefinite depending on the weather conditions with a solar panel so I hope you found this review useful thank you very much for watching and please take care out there